What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. And we're talking today about the big weekend that happened. We had a lot of stuff go down. I'm going to talk about most of the things that happened were SummerSlam, the new era with Triple H, and Ric Flair's last match. I will be doing a separate video uh, as, fa as far as the G1 Climax is concerned. Uh, we'll be covering the updated uh, events over this weekend. And if you want to know when that video goes up, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. Now let's talk about this past weekend everywhere else. Uh, I got to say this thing about the Ric Flair thing. And I try not to pay a lot of attention to it because I thought it was a really bad idea. Um, I heard things about it and then I went and actually watched the, I just watched the Flair main event match with Andrade, Jeff Jarrett. It was, uh, it was, it was interesting. It was, it was a, uh, scary in, in parts. Um, it just made me want to turn it off at, at a certain point in time. Uh, Flair was not, you know, at his age, this was always a concern and, uh, he didn't look good. He didn't look healthy. Uh, now the word is that he was injured training. So that's why he got into this match it was pretty bad. And the worst thing about it is at the end of the match, you hear him say he passed out in the match. He blacked out to Andrade after the match was over. Um, I, for me, the Ric Flair's retirement match is, I think it was WrestleMania 24. Shawn Michaels, I'm sorry, I love you. That's when Ric Flair retired. That, for me, that it just... Because everything else since then, it's been kind of like, yes, yeah, the Nature Boy, so we love you, but stop wrestling, man. Stop getting in the ring. And, and fortunately, this is definitely going to be his last match. I don't think he can get cleared for any, this in the future with any promoter or anybody worth, you know, with half a brain. So... Um, who knows, but, um, sorry, Nate, but on the SummerSlam, speaking of other, other things of bombast, well, WWE, of course, as we all know, has been going through a lot of shakeups. Triple H is taking over as creative director. Uh, people were looking at SummerSlam as maybe a launching off point. I think that'll probably be Monday night raw. If there are major changes coming to WWE, but I don't expect any super huge changes. There's subtle things here and there. And you even noticed that some of them on SummerSlam, of course, Io Shirai, who's got a new name now, or Yayo, whatever, whatever they're calling her now. Uh, her Dakota Kai came back, so they're back in WWE. That's definitely a Triple H and Stephanie thing. Um, and we got Bailey, as I suspected, making her return, making an appearance. So that was pretty cool. Um, as far as the event, the most of the event was it was just okay. The in ring stuff. There wasn't much to write home about. I'm going to talk about the one match that I was actually kind of disappointed in. The Logan Paul thing was pretty cool with The Miz. Uh, a, a lot of the back, there weren't any bad matches, anything that was terrible, too terrible. Um, but I, it just in general, it was kind of like, it's just a lot of, it's a lot of fluff and uh, little substance going on until we got to the main event. But I do want to talk about as far as the wrestling aspect, because a lot of you guys who followed me for a while know that I have this kind of thing with WWE now that when I look at WWE, I don't look at WWE for wrestling. I look at it for the fluff. I look at it for the spe spectacle and the moments, as they call it. So, well, in this particular case, because they had such a good match at Money in the Bank, I was expecting a lot out of the Usos versus the Street Profits, which is kind of like WWE's Briscoe FTR thing in, inside of WWE. As far as tag team wrestling, which has been a great year for tag team wrestling, and I was expecting a, a, another one of those performances here, but we didn't quite get it. This match was not quite as good as the one at Money in the Bank, so that was a little disappointing for me. Uh, the Usos, of course, retaining the championships, but then the main event kind of made up for it. The main event were Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. What do you do? I've got two guys who've been in the ring more times than you can ever count. They've done every move they could possibly think of doing or are capable of doing to each other. So what do you do at that point? You bring in a tractor. Brock Lesnar literally brought, drove a tractor to the ring in the beginning of the match. And I'm like, they're going to use this thing. This thing is now I originally thought that the tractor was going to be involved with keeping somebody down either under the arm or whatever, uh, for the 10 count for, since it was the last man standing match. It actually turned out not to be that because that actually could be kind of dangerous to do. But Brock started the match off by jumping off of the tractor onto Roman Reigns and started beating him up. Uh, Brock controlled most of the match. Then Roman would come back. And then at one point in time, Brock just 
kept doing what he could do to keep Roman down. Roman wouldn't stay down. So Brock went and got the tractor. And I don't think anybody expected this to happen. Instead of like running into it, I was like, what is he going to do with this tractor? Is he going to try to pin Roman underneath the arm? And then he actually, no, he, he pulled, he lifted, he, he lifted. I have a hard time saying this because I still can't believe I saw it. He lifted the ring from one corner up and the entire, oh, I've never seen this before, ever. Just completely upended the ring. One whole half of the ring is bent forward and it, it was brilliant. It was a brilliant little stunt that they did. I feel bad for the people that were on that side of the ring though who paid God knows how much thousands of dollars for those front row seats. And now you got to spend the next 15 minutes because the match went on for a while after this. Uh, looking at the underside of our WWE ring or trying to crane your neck up to look at the big screens or whatever. Uh, the ending came where, you know, uh, Theory came out. He was going to try to cash in. Didn't actually get the cash in because he got cut off by Roman and Brock. And then he got involved in all that stuff. Paul Heyman took a bump. He took an F5 through a table. That was, I gotta applaud Paul Heyman for that, man. Because, you know, dude is not athletic at all. So uh, him taking that bump, he, you know, he, everybody was all in on this match, for real. And Roman did, does get the win when they do the old spot of just piling up everything they possibly can at ringside on top of the person so they can't get up for the 10 count. And it was a cool shot. Roman stood on top of the pile of his hand, raised one, the one, you know. The head of the table, uh, victorious again, defending successfully the unified universal world WWE heavyweight championship, whatever it's called these days. Uh, now, the, the big thing about this, though, too, is that he's going to go on to face Drew McIntyre uh, and in the UK next month at that big pay-per-view. And one thing that I did mention before is that some of the residual effects of Vince leaving the company. There was some shade thrown here and there. Like and speaking of Drew McIntyre, he cut a promo in the middle of the show and he kind of mocked the fact that it was Brock and Roman for the like 30th time. But he was like, it's for the first time in this arena on pay-per-view for both championships in the last man standing match watched by this kid over here, Colt or something, whoever the kid's name was. That was a little shade thrown at the book in there. Um, Michael Cole had a couple comments during the night with Corey Graves. At one point he's like, Corey Graves was like, I liked it better when you couldn't voice your opinion. And then Michael Cole goes, well, uh, that's changed. A lot has changed. <laughs> and I was like, you guys low key try to take those jabs at Vince there, but you know, it's all good. It's, you know, it's a new era, a new day. And, um, you know, these guys, you know, look, there are a lot of people in WWE who are just as frustrated with WWE as a lot of the fans who are frustrated with WWE are, but it's a job and they do it and they're getting paid a lot of money. They're in the biggest sports entertainment, wrestling, whatever company in the world. So, you know, I, I personally, if I was in the industry, I probably would, I'd probably do th a three-year contract with WWE just to get the money and then get the hell out of there and do a John Moxley thing and go elsewhere and just, and then wrestle for fun after I made the money, then do the kind of wrestling I wanted to do. But there are a lot of people that are there for life is because they're dependent on it. I can't get on them too much for, for expressing that on air, but I'm just kind of surprised. And Lord knows what's going to happen this Monday night on Monday Night Raw. I will be doing the 30 day Raw challenge this uh, this month. So I'm going to try to watch the next four, the, the entire month of August. I'm going to try to watch every episode of Monday Night Raw. I haven't done that in a long, long time. It's been many years since I've even watched a full episode of Monday Night Raw. So stay tuned to that. <laughs> subscribe to the channel and uh, check out for those videos. It'll probably be up on about Tuesdays or Wednesdays whenever I get them up. Um, and until then, I want to know what you guys thought about SummerSlam. What do you think about Ric Flair's last match? Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. And until next time, I will see you guys here for more news, rumors, and commentary right here on the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. Have a good day.